bezel-less future has finally arrived. Kinda, sorta. Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and remember that Vivo Apex concept phone we saw a couple weeks ago at that trade show? It was a concept phone, meaning it's never gonna go on sale. They only made a couple, it's more like a working prototype, but it was a vision or this idea of technologies that could come to eventually be more affordable. But sure enough, a couple weeks later, Vivo said, wait, hold that thought. We're actually gonna make a real phone that we're going to go on sale with that's just almost there. Almost there. It has a lot of the same technologies from that concept phone that's gonna be brought down into something that we can actually sell. So that's how we got this, Vivo Nex, or NEX. I'd consider this the closest thing we have to an actual bezel-less phone right now. So just opening up the box and looking at it for the first time, it is pretty striking. This is that notchless phone people have been clamoring for, and honestly, the phone I've been wanting the future to bring since we started getting notches in the first place. This one happens to be a 6.6-inch 1080p Super AMOLED display, and it's a little taller than 16 by 9. It's 19.3 by 9. Uh, it has these well-rounded corners that we're seeing in every phone now, and with these super thin bezels, you end up with a 91.24% screen to body ratio. So cracking that holy grail 90% number. Highest I've seen in a real phone here. And I think it's pretty sick. Uh, it does have the looks. It's not perfect, but the top bezel is tiny. The side bezels are about the same as what we see in a lot of other phones now. And then a little bit more of a chin than the concept phone. You get about a five millimeter chin at the bottom. Looks pretty similar to what you have in like a OnePlus 6, maybe even a little bit smaller than that but I have no problems holding it, even though it's a huge display. My hand doesn't really touch the edges, but if it does, the accidental touch rejection is on point. This is truly the most screen we have in any phone. But that naturally brings us to the question, what about all the stuff that's normally on the front of the phone? What about the front-facing sensors? What about the stuff that's normally in the notch? where that all go. And that's where you get those Apex concept phone technologies trickling down in this one already. So number one is that fingerprint sensor. And this is the under glass fingerprint reader that I've tested to the max in a previous video. Same deal here, no fingerprint reader anywhere else on this phone. It's just under the glass at the front with all the pros and cons that come with that in 2018. So you know, a little slower, a little more finicky, but definitely cleverly hidden for this concept. And then number two, the front facing camera. Where is that? This one is actually hidden just like the Apex Concept phone. It's in this mechanically retracting chassis that slides up and down whenever it's needed and makes this noise in the process. Now that might seem a little cheesy, but you can actually choose between three artificial noises. You can pick your favorite or you can just leave it silent. So that, that, that's the front facing camera. That's what happens every time you wanna take a selfie, every time Snapchat opens, every time you wanna do an Instagram Live, all that. The concern naturally with this is that it's a moving part. Phones normally don't have moving parts. They're normally completely solid state for things like waterproofing and durability. That kind of stuff here is probably a little bit questionable. You know, if you drop this while the camera is out, does it just snap off? You know, if something happens in your pocket, it gets scratched. What if the app freezes or the mechanism fails? What if someone pushes back against it? All that stuff, of course, has probably been tested by Vivo, but you never really know what might happen in real life. And I gotta be honest, I wasn't even expecting the camera to be that great, but it looks pretty good on the phone. Like, it isn't a phone that's gonna be coming to the US, as far as I can tell, it's just China, but there's a lot more to this phone than just the design. The rest is pretty solid too. Like, you might remember when I first heard about this phone, I tweeted like, the rest of it could be trash, but the design is still really cool. But this is, uh, this is a full flagship from Vivo, so this is getting the full treatment. This is Snapdragon 845 inside, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of storage and a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. It's like everything Lenovo wanted to be. Uh, seems like a pretty quality pair of dual cameras on the back. It's 12 megapixel primary and five megapixels. And they're in this super shiny rainbow reflective metallic type of material. They actually named it, they call it holographic diffraction dynamic color illusion technology. Uh, it still has a headphone jack. It is a dual SIM card tray at the bottom as well. It has this AI button. Uh, Vivo software is pretty specific, like it's not my cup of tea. Uh, it's not for this market, obviously, so a lot of stuff isn't even English here, but overall, like I said, it's a real honest flagship, and I'd, I'd love to see them actually try to make and sell a US version, 100%. But yeah, let me know, if this is this the future we asked for? Is this how bad we hate the notch that we're willing to go to mechanical moving parts to get rid of it? 
hit me with those comments, let me know what you think. Also, definitely check out my two other videos that are pretty specific to this phone and possibly another one upcoming, but I've done the in-glass fingerprint reader tested to the max, to the extreme. I'll link that below that like button. And there is also a video all about notches and how that technology is shifting towards this. Either way, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.